Hi everyone, and welcome back to another free catch tutorial. In this free catch tutorial, we're looking at creating a surface using array in tools. So for this tutorial, I'm looking at creating parts of this object in front of us here. This is a truck exhaust complete with heat shield. I'm interested in this part, the heat shield itself. If I was modeling this from the ground up, I would see that this is an assembly. It's got multiple objects in here. So I'd model each of these individually. So if we look closer, we see we have the bracket, the heat shield, the exhaust pipe, and this bar that runs around the outside. So all those are separate parts to model. So it's essential that we can identify assemblies or something that's called a composite object when we break down the models we want to create. We'll get to composite objects later in other videos. If I take a closer look at this surface, we see that it's a cylinder with a repeating pattern within. If we're going to model this, then one approach will take, say, a sketch and sketch that upon the cylinder and try to create this all in one go. That is very CPU intensive because we're dealing with a number of sketch geometries and number of constraints in there, so they all have to be calculated it's better to break this down once more. This, in fact, is a composite object. The idea is that if we look across this object, I've just sectioned out a part here, this is a repeating pattern. So we took this part here by first creating a cylinder of the section that we want to repeat, like so, and then remove the pattern away from the cylinder we get this section here. This section can then be reflected. So if you look, if we take this section here and come out of it, so we've got this whole bit here. So these two sections, we can see that they're repeated as we move up the object. So we can make a mirror of this section, then take that mirror and repeat it upwards. So in this tutorial, we're going to be showing how to do that. So let's have a look how to create this from the ground up. If you like what you've seen and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header, on the about page, or in the descriptions of these videos. Now I've opened up FreeCAD and I've started a new document. There are a number of workflows that we can follow. One's using the Curse Workbench with a sketch on the surface, but I'm going to be using the Part and Draft Workbench. I'm going to be switching between those. So first of all, let's come over to the Sketcher and let's start to sketch in a new sketch along the XY plane, looking down. This is going to be our cylinder. So using the circle, I've got the auto constraints on. So if I come into the constraints, this one here, and use a drop down, I see we've got the auto constraints on. So using the circle tool, we'll create a circle that's auto constrained to the center. Let's come out and create another one as well for the internal wall. Right click to cancel the tool, select the outside, and we'll give this some dimensions using the diameter, diameter constraint of 50 millimeters. So we've got the first one in, we've got the internal one here. So if we zoom in, we can see we've got the internal one that sits here. So we need this one at 40 millimeters. They're just random values. I'm adding to this, so 40 millimeters. This may be a bit thick, but we're going to go for that for the time being. Let's close that now. Now we've got our base sketch, which I'm going to come over to the part workbench and extrude that. Selecting the sketch and using the extrude. And set the extrude to 10 mil. 
making sure that the create solid is checked as well. And hit OK. So created the first part. If I'm not happy with this extrude, I can come into the sketch and say alter the internal from 40 to 45 millimeters. Hit close. And we've got the first part of our model. Next, we're looking at creating this shape in here. So this is a slot shape. You notice that we have to intercept the top or if we're doing it from the bottom, we have to intercept it down here. I'm going to take it from the bottom, this one here, because if we look back at our design, this one will be sitting on the XY plane and zero, if I look at the view and toggle axis cross, this is where zero will be. So we're going to be in line with the bottom. Create that profile sketch. I'm going to make sure nothing's selected. Come over to the sketcher and create a new sketch along this plane here, the XZ plane. The XZ plane. And hit OK. And we'll now section view or sketch view section so I can see through this object. So we use slot geometry, come in, attach to the center, and bring this down and attach it to the vertical axis. Right click to cancel the tool, and we'll zoom in. If I try to extrude this, then we're only going to get this shape here. So I want to move this away from that center point. As you can see, I can't drag this because this is a constant constraint, this one here. So what do we do? Well, if I select it and hit delete on the keyboard, that will delete that constant constraint. I should be able to move this up into place. And we'll set some distance from here, this point and this point, those two there, and set some height. Let's set this to 3.5 millimeters. So we've got the height in there. The next one we want to do is set the arc to a diameter. Using a diameter, the moment it's nine. Let's set this to seven millimeters and hit OK. It's not fully constrained yet. We can just put a height in here using the height and let's set this to five. We can see that still got one degree of freedom. Now, if we zoom in, we can see that we haven't got any vertical constraint on this line. So let's add a vertical constraint. That's all locked down now. Let's close that and see what we have. So we have the profile of that hole that's seen here. I want to move this this way. So take the sketch. Look at the placement, look at the position. We want to move it along the Y axis, this one here. Y, so we press down, we see that moves into position. Want to just break through the surface, round about there. Go a bit further. Doesn't matter what distance this is away, as long as it's near to that surface. So we've got the sketch now. Now if we think what we're doing, I don't want to make another sketch upon this sketch because it will be here. And if we take a projection from where the sketch is to the center, you can see that's in line with that center. We want geometry that runs around here that radiates around and is facing that center. So we get a nice cut removing this material to make that pattern. For that, I'm going to use a polar array once I've extruded this sketch. Let's come over to the part workbench and take that last sketch, this one, we select it, and use the extrude. We want to extrude to the center. 
Now, if we get this wrong, you don't have to worry. We can come back and edit this. 10 millimeters should be enough. And if I just hit OK, it's gone the wrong way. So I can click on that extrude, come down and look at the length forward and set that to minus value and hit enter. That's gone through that now. If we look at the direction, we can set that as well. I've just set this to minus value. So we've got our strewed. I don't want to cut this just yet. I need to make an array of this so it radiates around and faces the center. If I click on that strewed and look up the placement, we can see that the angle is zero at the moment. But if I up this angle, you can see what's happening. And this is the way we want the strews to go around there. Let's hit zero. To create the array, we will use the draft workbench. We'll be swapping between the draft workbench and the part quite often in this tutorial. So it may be worth taking one of these tools or a number of these tools, which is going to be the clone and the array tools, and we could move them onto the global space up here. So it's there on every single workbench that we use. That's one option. I'm just going to leave these here. So we take the extrude, make sure it's selected. Cut modifications, array tools, and we want the polar array. When we're in the polar array, first thing we want to do is come down to the bottom and make sure that the link array is checked, but the fuse array, this one here, is unchecked. I don't want to fuse those together. The reason being, it takes more CPU power. The same with the link array. It saves on CPU compute time. Our polar array is going to be 360. Set the number of elements to 10. This center of rotation is wherever the mouse is. We come in and click reset point. This sets it to 0, 0, 0, the center of the screen. If I move out, then this is going to move. So make sure we reset the point, make sure we keep in the panel and hit OK. We've created our array, but we haven't finished yet. Looking back, we need to reflect the array down the bottom. We don't want to remove any material yet. We can do that all in one operation. It's all about saving operations. We have this array. Just going to hide the grid. I can take that array and clone it using the clone tool on the toolbar or come up to modifications and clone. You can see we have a clone that sits in the same position as the original array. We need to make a mirror of this array and we can do that via the clone itself. The reason why I've used a clone is any changes to this sketch gets reflected in the extrude gets reflected in the array and then gets reflected in the clone. So that's come down after selecting the array, the clone array, and we have the scale here, this scaling. We want to reflect along the Z axis, this one here. So we come in to the Z and set this to minus one. If I click off and let that recompute, you can see how that's reflected there. Let's take that clone of the array and position it at the top. So we've got the placement in the clone. We've got the position. And we're looking along the Z axis. So I can move that up and we'll move it up to 10. So the height of this is strewed. That places it there. We also need to rotate it as well, so it sits in between. To do that, we come up to the placement, which we're already on. We've got 360 degrees divided by 10 elements, which is 36. Then we're going to divide that by two to sit in the center. So that's 18 degrees. If you don't want to do the maths, what you can do, let's just zero that out. We can place 360 
divided by 10 and hit enter. This gives our 36 degrees and then just come back in and divide that by two. So we can do the maths inside the fields themselves. Now I've got the array. Let's see what happens if I edit the sketch. Let's come into the array and come into the extrude and come into the sketch. Let's double click the sketch and change the height of this sketch that's in here. At the moment, it's five millimeters here. The one I want to change is the 3.5 here. So I'm going to double click it and set this to four. That moves it up. Let's set this a bit further. Let's go 5.5. So we're close to that top there. If I close that now, see what's happened. Because we've reflected this is strewed, when we increase the length of that sketch so it moves this curve up, it applies it across all the array and then it's mirrored on the other side so the arc of this is strewed comes down. If we didn't use the reflect, we'll get the arc going up here and also the arc moving up in this direction, which we don't want. We'll just end up with one higher than the other. So we have two arrays, one clone and one normal array. We'll now cut this away from this circle, this ring here. To do that, let's come over to the part workbench. We're flipping between the part and draft quite a lot in this tutorial. Click the array and then control click the cloned array. So we've got both of those selected. We can't create a cut between these against this circle yet. We need one object. To save time, I'm going to join these together, part, compound, and make compound. Let's join that compound together into one object. I now can take this ring, I can select it from the tree view if I wanted to, the extrude. One I want to keep, the one I want to remove is a compound. And we'll come out to part, boolean, and cut. We've now create a cut of that object. You can see that we've got a little bit of a problem at the back. So we think about what's happening. It looks okay from the front, but from the back, it's right close to here. We look to the top, we've got a straight cut through here. So we've gone through the widest circle and then we've gone through the inner skin, which is a much shorter in diameter circle. So we get this thin wall here and the thicker on the other side. What do we do? Well, because we've got one extrude inside the compound, inside the array, and this is strewed here, if I zoom out and press the space bar to show it. Well, first we will show the array, there we go. And we've got that strewed within. I can now modify that strewed and add some taper on that. You can see what's happening. Take the strewed and we'll come down and look for the taper angle. So we've got zero degrees in here. I set this to five. We may have to do this in a minus direction depending on which way it goes. So it's gone in the right direction. You can see that there. And we've got a much thicker wall between the extrude and the ring itself. So created a taper going inwards. And can see if we follow the projection of that angle, we get slices going through here. That's hide that array, pressing the space bar. And we've got the first part of our pattern that we need. We now need to reflect that pattern downwards. Again, I'm going to come over to the draft workbench. Let's shrink these and select the cut. 
create a clone by modifications and clone. Our clone is in here. We'll reflect the clone, go down to the scale, and again using the Z and placing a minus one in there to reflect that clone. Hit enter. It recomputes. And now we have these two parts. We'll look at this. We can see that we now got the pattern that we need. We just join these together and array these upwards. To save compute time, rather than fusing these together, let's use the part workbench and again create a compound. Select the cut, control select the other cut, part, compound, and make compound. I now can use the draft workbench once again, coming back to it, selecting the compound, and this time modifications, array tools, and array to create a basic array. So this is a number of elements that we're gonna add along the X, Y, and Z. We're going along the Z. Now to start with, we use a low value. I'm going to use three. This is just a test our array. Make sure the Y is set to one and the X is set to one as well. Next, we've got the intervals. We have no X intervals. We don't want repeats along the X, so we zero all those out. The same for the Y, no Y intervals. So we set that to zero. Z on the other hand, at the moment is interval of 100 millimeters. So that means that this whole compound will be arrayed three times at 100 millimeters this way. Remember that the height was 10 mil. So now we've got 20 mil because we've got two of these. Let's set the Z to 20 mil. Again, make sure the fuse is unchecked and the link array is checked. Cut to the top, hit OK. We've now got the array and you can see we've got the pattern that we need. So you can see that there. And we just set this to whatever length we want. Click the array. We can come in. The count is free at the moment. So come down to the interval Z and set this, say, to five and click off. We have five repeats now. This is an array at the moment. I can make this a join solid by coming over to the part and joining that if I want to, or I can keep it as a compound object if I want to save time. To make this one fusion, let me click on it, part, boolean, and come down to union. It will disappear from screen. And if you look to the left, the fusion has a tick saying it needs recompute. We just use the refresh from the toolbar or edit, refresh. Remember the shortcut key. What will happen, this will recompute. And we have our finished object. We don't have to do this fusion. If we add a bottom and top to this, then we can select those in the tree view and export them as one STL. We now created this object, but we see that we have a number of faces. These lines going across, they are all separate rings and separate faces. This doesn't matter when we export this. Visually, it may not be pleasing to see these lines going across. We'll come up to view, draw style, and shaded. This is what's going to export. Our next job is to extend the surface at the bottom. Looking back, we can see that the surface is extended down to here. So our pattern stops as we move towards the bottom. So I'm going to replicate this now. Come back to FreeCAD, let's come up to view, draw style, and set it back to flat lines. I'm going to take the fusion and hit delete. So we've got the array. And what we need to do is create another ring down here and remove 
this shape from it. So we can see this slot here, we need to remove that from it. Let's have a look at some of the operations within. So we've got the array, we've got the original cut here, which we're going to press the spacebar on. So we can see that cut there. Let's press spacebar again. And we've got the other cut, which is down here. Let's come into the cut and look at the extrude. So we've got the extrude, which is the ring. And from here, you can see this reflection down. So we've got this reflection down here. Let's press the space bar. Let's come into the compound and look at the two arrays, this one and this one. So we've got those two arrays there. I want to use this bottom array to remove material from the ring that I'm going to add to finish off this surface. But it's in the wrong position because we have this ring here that runs around this way. Let's see if we can find that ring. So we've got the array, which I'm going to press the spacebar on and keep this array here, this one. This is strewed. Moment is highlighted the strewed, but we've got the array here. Let's have a look at the clone cut. So this one here. So the clone cut has been reflected down this way. So we look down to the bottom of the scale, we can see the minus one, which has reflected that. Let's hide the top array, this one here. Press the space bar. And bring back, we've got the clone cut. Let's find the cut that's attached to it. Now an easy way to do this is to come in, click on the clone, this one here. Let's get the right one first. And look at the label. We've got to cut zero one, which is this one. And what we're looking for is the object. So we've got the cut in here. See it's underlined. If we click on that, that will take us to the object that's been cloned from. Now I can press the space bar so it shows it. So we can see that in there. So we've got the cut inside the compound and the clone cut. I want to move this so it's sitting along this edge. That means I can use this array and a surface that comes down here, and remove that array from that surface to finish off this object. So we take that cut, look at the placement, look at the position, and look at the Z axis. We change that so it's going to go up from here, this point here, it's going to go up 10 and then 20. So set Z to 20. Now it's in position, everything will recompute. So I want to click off, everything will recompute. And what we have now is that it's moved out to the top, the ratio will be recomputed, press the spacebar, and it looks like we have what we've been looking for. So that's good. We've still got some things in here that we need to make invisible. So let's Leave the array there. We've got the cut. Let's press the spacebar on the cut. And the other cut, which is sitting there, press the spacebar on that as well. So that's all done. So now what we're left with is this array here. So the extrude array, this one here. For this, we're going to create another ring on the bottom. For that, I'm going to find the original ring, which is in here somewhere. So we've got this extrude here. We've got this one here, which is the ring. Inside that ring, we have the sketch. So we'll reuse this sketch here. So I've just pressed the space bar on it so we can see it in there. See it around the bottom. That's inside the compound, inside the cut, inside the extrude, and that sketch there. If I extrude that once more now and set this to go in a minus direction. So let's go minus, uh, minus 20. Make sure it's solid and hit OK. That's extruded out the bottom now. Take the one I want to keep, the extrude, 
and control click this one here. And now you see it's selected the extrude. We don't want that. So click the extrude to unselect it and then control click the array. And we'll use the cut from the toolbar this time. So now we finished off the bottom and we notice that this is actually too small. And this is because of the original sketch. So the sketch that makes up this slot, if we find it, let's come in and it will be this extrude in here and this sketch, this one here, let's double click that. We see the size of this extrude here, it's too small. So this is where we can play with the length going down this way. Remember the height of this removes from our first ring. So we can use the height going downwards to remove from our second ring. So let's take the five millimeter and set this to 10 and hit enter. That's moved down now. If I hit close, everything will recompute. And we've removed the material from this ring now. I will just reflect this on the other side to finish the whole heat shield. Before I do that, let's take these two, control click them. So we've got the array and the cut and combine them together from the part, compound and make compound. If I wanted to, I can extend the ray further by just coming into the compound, finding that array, this one here, having a look down. The count at the moment is five on the Z. And we can set this to say eight. Click off. That will recompute. And we've got eight rings going up, extending that surface up. I'm going to keep that to four, come into the array, set this back to four, hit enter. We've got this compound. We can mirror this now. Let's view and toggle the axis cross. So we've got our surface complete with the end. Let's mirror this this way to finish this part. And take the compound, I'm going to use the mirror or part mirroring. It's going to ask us what axis we're going to mirror over. So if we look, we want to mirror over this X, Y plane. It's a mirror plane, mirror over this plane here. X, Y plane and hit OK. So you can see the plane is towards the center of the 3D view. So now we have to move this. Now we can use a calculation for this. If we look, click on the mirror, right click, transform, you see that our handler is here. So let's just okay that. If I click on the compound, come down, we've got the position in here, which is inside the placement. Open that up, we've got the position and we've got the Z, the Z axis. Move it on the Z, it's going to move the mirror. We can use a formula filled in here. So we've got this little expression at the end. Let's open this up and see what we need. First of all, we've got to offset that from the center of origin using the extrude height times the amount of array elements we got. So our extrude height, if we come in, if we remember that we used a ring to do this, this one here is not the extrude. Oh yes it is, that's the ring at the bottom, which we don't want. Let's come into this array, come into compound one. Should have named these really. So this cut here is the ring. So the original cut, We've got the extrude in here. We can see that ring is there. Look down, remember that was 10 millimeters. So you can see it's 10 millimeters. And we used a clone of that ring with cuts 
resulting in a 20 millimeter high compound. So let's go back to the original mirror. Look at the Z. We can come into here. And the first extrude we did, if I type in a extrude, we can see we've got this extrude coming up here. So it's the very first extrude we did, which is a extrude. And we can see that there, the name of it. And if we look, we've got the length forward, this one here, and saying 10. So we need to times that by two to get the 20. So that will move it 20 millimeters. But we also got to times it by the count of the array components. So this one here. So if I times that by array 002, so times array, and it's come up in our list, 002, add a dot, which is already added, and type in C for count. We've got 80 now. So that's going to move it 80 millimeters. We also got to remember that we've created a copy of this using the mirror. So we've got to move it another 80 millimeters. We've got 80 at the moment. So we just times that by two, 160. Let's hit OK and click off. We'll recompute. And now we've got the top and the bottom in that mirror. Remember that these are separate sides. The reason why we use the formula, you could change the length of that if you wanted to. But if we change the array, and this time set the count to say, well, it's going to be the Z interval, the number Z, set this to say two, and click off. This will recompute. And it keeps it in proportion. So I'll set this one to say eight and click off. Then that's automatically reflected and everything moves with the model. Just going to set this one back to four. And then I'm going to take the mirror and the compound inside. Control select both of these. And we're going to use a part compound and make compound. We've got our final compound, which we can export out to SDL. So that's the final finish of that heat shield. We can add mounting screws in here if we wanted to, holes for those. But remember to add them to this side because this is a mirror. Add them to this cut. So this cut in here, which will be if we come into the compound, we've got this cut here. Add them to that. Therefore, when it's mirrored, it gets added in. And we don't have to worry about any fusions in here. Let's hide that. So that's how to create that surface of a heat exchange using the draft array and the part workbench. Hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you in the new one. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B E Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.